I'm going to give you a little bit of suggestions on how we can hopefully retain our people. The average stay now, according to my HR friends, I moved in the HR circle. I used to be one of the board, one of the judges for the employer of the year when we team up. So I kind of understand the average employment uh, life now is two and a half years. Now, wala na yung mga 20 years, yung mga, kaya hindi lang dapat award ang binibigay for 20 years of service, you should build a monument for people. <laughs> <laughs> so, let me, talk, let me talk to you about the generation of mindset. May I make a, may I make a suggestion? What na wag kayong kukuha ng millennial na magtutul ng ganito. There's this guy in LinkedIn, grabe, kung mag-post. Kasi, ang tinuturin niya, understand the millennial, puro benefiting them without their responsibility. Labo naman. The same guy now will post in LinkedIn and say, if you're not happy with your job, quit your job. You don't deserve unhappiness. Really? Bugbugin ko kaya yan. Alam mo, bakit sinabi niya yan? Wala siyang job eh. Kaya siya eh. Lakas lang pe. Oh, sorry, I have to apologize. Sir. Marami po motivational speakers galing na galing sa akin. Okay, because the feeling is extremely neutral. So, I don't want to do too much. So, the bata kaya na mo korap ito do yung mind. Kaya pagpaso sa office yung mami ato may kaya. You cannot understand generational mindset and behaviors without knowing two people. Number one, his name is Martin Lindstrom. Martin Lindstrom is a guru in marketing in Europe. Unfortunately, the Philippines don't know him well. Kaya may mind. I write for the Philippine Star, you know. When the Philippine Star organized a convention in the uh, SFX convention, uh, they were expecting about 1,500, only 450 showed up. Because it's not Kilala. But our friends, uh, sister partner, we have a Nestle. Our friends from Nestle, we quietly fly him over in his private jet, conduct a marketing seminar, and quietly fly him out. So he became a good friend of mine. Martin Lindstrom revived a term in psychology called somatic marker. Can you say that with me? Somatic marker. It's now being used in marketing studies. Somatic marker. What is a somatic marker? A somatic marker is a bookmark in your brain, often created by an event so dramatic we never forget it. May nangyari, hindi mo makalimutan. Case in point, taas na lang ang kamay. How many among you still? Remember, 911, Yeah. Next question. How many of you still remember what you were doing and where you were when 911 happened? Yeah, that's a somatic marker. And so, Odoi, hmm? uh, Yolanda, so forth and so on. For this younger generation, there will be no somatic marker bigger than the pandemic. Okay? So, that's a somatic marker. And now, I want you to put that somatic marker on your left brain because I'm going to bring you somewhere else. There's another personality that you have to learn. She is now known as the guru of generational studies. Her name is Tamara Erickson. So there I was in the conference hall. Paglabas ni Tamara Erickson, sabi ko, ay, nakalugi ako dito kasi hindi siya sikat eh. Paano mo ko sisisihin? You know, the speakers before her were Jack Wells, Jim Collins, you know. She turned out to be one of the best. In our field of uh, speaking and training, maraming mga magagali, hindi na kinata. So, and, and life is unfair. So, maybe one thing I've learned is if I need speakers and trainers, I will never settle for anybody who is not a practitioner. Hindi pwede yung mga theories, theories na. So, Tamara Edson came out. Pagkatapos, ma'am, kayo na po ang sumagot, especially kung may mga pedia tayo dito. Sabi niya, 
What are the ages of the kids that are most significant in their child's development? Ano years? Zero, or two, two, six, seven. Yeah, okay. So, may sumigaw dun sa audience without even using the mic. Zero to seven. Sabi niya, you're right. But, those are the physical developments as far as physical senses are concerned. Smell, sight, touch, feel, support, and so on. But, in terms of personality development, the most significant years for their development is 11 to 14. Bakit 11 to 14? Ang ganda ng sagot niya. Sabi niya, those are the years when kids started to tune in to the conversations of the parents when they're having dinner. Ladies and gentlemen, your dining table is the most important piece of furniture in your house. Are you kidding me? That is the place where traditions and values are being passed from one generation to another. Okay, now sabi sa akin, what are the usual pieces of conversation when you're having dinner? Na pinapakinggan ng mga bata, ano? What did you do? Problem, saan pa? School, saan pa? Later, oh, what? Somatic markers, di ba? Current events. Yan ang pinag-usang, ano ba yan? Pande? No. Ano ba yan? Lockdown na naman, di ba? Yan ang hindi na napupulot yun na. Now, I begin to understand. Hindi ko tayo, hindi ako in favor, but now I understand. We dislike all these political dynasties and everything. Yung ano ba yan? Yung tatay governor, yung nanay congresswoman, yung anak ng pangalay, mayo na... And guess what they talk about every time they're having dinner? Politics! Nakakapagtakapagpan, nalalaki silang mga politicians. Do you still wonder why? Especially in our community, the Chinese community, we talk about business. That's why our kids go up to become business. Lahat ng anak ko ngayon mga negosyante. Because that's what we talk about. Kaya pag nasa dinner na kayo, wala na kayo pinag-uusap ako hindi showbiz na naging chismoso yung mga anak mo. May effect yan eh, di ba? So now, dito tayo papasok sa mga different generations. Let me start with the traditionalists, some other terms given to the traditionalists or the silent generation or the builders. Let's call them traditionalists. How many of you still have relatives belonging to the tradition? Is it they mga pinagalap before 1946? Ah, Hindi ko tinatanong yung nandi dito. Kung may kamakana kayo, meron? Yeah, oo. Uh, yung iba buka, pero hindi. Uh, ano ang mga somatic markers sa mga pinagalap before 1946? War! So what do you see? You see the Japanese aggression in the Pacific, you see the bombing of Nagasaki and Hiroshima, you find the uh, extended Korean War, the Allied Wars against the Axis forces, war. So, ano ngayon ang personality ng mga traditionalists? Look at their personality. Number one, they are extremely frugal. Correct? Yes. Number two, they are very hardworking. If they're still able to work, they will work for it. Right? Oh, number three, dito na yung dynamics ng leadership. What? They pay premium to respect. Isang bagay na mga hinahanap nila sa atin, ano yun? Respect. You want to piece them off? Disrespect them. They get upset. Gusto mo magalit sila? Pakita mo sa kanilang wagas ka sa pera. Nagwawala yan. Correct? Oh, ito na ha. Watch this. They have no problem with authority. Kung, na, kung ako ay traditionalist, pakatapos, sa ating kaibigan natin from Mental City kanina, yung mga mga bata. Oo. Kung siya, what's your name? Huh? Maricor? Binago mo lang? Yung pangalan mo. Uh, how young are you? She look younger, no? So, for example, siya ang boss ko, ako nga, 67 na ako ngayon. Pero siya, 33, Wala mo problema because the traditionalist understands the importance of authority. During their days, MacArthur, Stalin, Field Marshal, Montgomery, Winston Churchill, they symbolize authority. Wala problema. Oh, what, ha? Kailangan magsabi kung tama yung observation ko, ito yung personality nila. 
they hoard stuff. <laughs> Ayaw yung pamigay? Ayaw yung ibenta. Dahil yung sila yung lumalaki, they were scarcity. Uh, eto pa, when they shop in groceries, they buy in bulk. Sabi ko sa nanay ko, ma, maraming pala. Hindi, maubos na ako. Pagpili niya, pagbukas ng cabinet, punong-puno. And they're loyal to one one brand. Gabi yung nanay ko, pag wala ng bata siya hanggang na wala na siya, iisa na nga brand na ginagamit ng hair color in Dijen. <laughs> Correct? So, if you have to leave them, no problem. Respect them now. Next, I'm going to talk to you about the baby boomer. Baby boomers are those born between 1946 and 1960. Sino yung mga yan? Kaso ka nga eh. Yan! Buti na lang, may kasama ako dito. By the way, 1985, I founded the local jeans brand. Galing ako passion. So, we made jeans and jackets and shirts. Joe Marichan was my model and maneuvers were my model. Let me ask you a question. How many of you are familiar with the brand I invented in 1985 called Company B? Taas kamay. Yun. Yung lahat ng magtaas na kamay, mga kabats made ko yan eh. Magsasalsa pa kami sa Interpol. So, ano ngayon? Ang mga somatic marker namin. Number one, make love not war. Woodstock, hippies. Wow. Oh, ano pa? Beatles! First man on the moon! Ladies, today, if you are now in leadership position, you gotta pay tribute to those great women who march into the streets fighting for equal rights. Kasi ang mga kabapuihan nung araw, ang trabaho nila, taga-sharp pen lang ng pencil, taga-mix lang ng coffee, steno, uh, phone receptionist. Look at where you are now! Parami ng parami ngayon ang mga women leaders na pumapasok ngayon sa corporate world and they do excellently. Kaya next year, next March, I'm planning to organize a conference entitled Men Empowerment Month. <laughs> ang feeling ko matagal na kami ito embattered eh, ngayon. <laughs> Kaya saan ko magpunta majority babae? Kita mo, kita lang, di ba? Nawawala yung mga lalaki. The few of them that are left, many of them are not. So, next. I'm gonna get myself in trouble. So, baby boomers, they drive themselves hard. Para sa amin, life is a zero-sum game. Either you win or you lose. Either naging binunari ka o magiging pulubi ka. So, Ang pagkakaintindi ng ibang generation, kami ay workaholic. Siyempre! Bakit? Kanina lang, nag-uusap ko nila ito eh. Kasi yung pinag-uusapan dito, bakit yung mga millennials, lahat ng pagagawa ko sa kanila, may kwenta. Kami makwenta rin, kaya lang wala kami power kasi walang option. Eh dito sa mga millennials, ang daming options eh. Therefore, kami nung araw, tsaka ka! Sumikat ako sa negosyo dahil sa company B, pero nag-umpisa ako sa garments industry. Tagabihis ako ng mannequin sa show window. Are you kidding me? How many of you are from Cebu? Taas ang mic. Uh, Cebu, ma'am, ang mga binibihis akong tindahan noong araw, Rosita Palog, Rosita Puentes, Gasini, sino mga tiga Cagayan de Oro? Pero ba? Cagayan de Oro? Okay, Steve Caisano, siyempre, hindi na ginagawa ko. So, anybody from Davao? Ah, uh, Davao. Isang tindahan lang, pero seven branches. Phil Chris. Phil Chris Salas, Magsaysay, Bolton, Industria. Ayun, talagang ako ng manikin. Kaya nga natato ko sa akin, nilodong ko, nilodina ko akong way. Eh. Sabi niya, Grabe, Francis, he used to help my mom fix our window in Robinson's Ermita. Sinong dalawa ni Hardy na bibiroan ngayon, nakaupo na kami, natikinig na sa'yo. Walang option eh. Pwede bang sabihin, ayaw ko na, lilipan na, walang paglilipatan. <laughs> Kaya kung ikaw kumpil mo, tayo yung araw, di ba matyabla? Hindi pa na yung ang standard eh. You get it? Yeah. So, yung nanay ko, belonging to the tradition, is karapit tikas ng karakter niya. 
Um, nag-away kami na nag-away every day. So some people ask you, how come Francis, you're so, you're so articulate in public speaking. So I have daily practice fighting against my mom. <laughs> Never work for a company, never enter business. Unfortunately, kayo wala siyang alam sa mundo eh. Kaya eh, di ba ka ako, maghiram mo rin ng gitara, 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 self, self-learning. Noong araw, mayroong sikat na magazine that teaches you how to play the guitar. Ano pangalan? Jingle magazine. Yan, makita mo. Marami pa lang mas matatanda kaysa sa akin. So nakita ng nanay ko, nagigitara ko sila. Ano, mahilig ka na magitara? Sabi ko, oo ba, bakit ba? Sabi ko, ay nagigitara ka rin lang. Magsuot ka na ng sunglass, magdala ka ng lata, sa harap ng mga kyapo ka ng gano'n. Kasi kung hindi lang nagkakaroon, magiging pulubi ako eh. So one day, nagbabasket ko lang, dribble, dribble, dribble. Sabi niya, mahilig ka na sa buhon, ng basket ko. Sabi ko, oo, bakit ba? Lam laman ng bola niya, laman din ng utak mo. <laughs> Hangin yun eh, di ba? <laughs> That's the generation. Talaga na ko yan. Ang hindi alam ng mga bata, gabi naman si doktor, gabi naman si sir, yung dahanat at kamorkahol, may yaman na ng papayaman. Hindi na papakayaman, hindi mo na matanggal sa amin yan. Life for us is like a musical chair experience, trip to Jerusalem. If you miss one chair, you're out of the game. Bigyan mo na ako ng seven days na wala akong trabaho, baka sure, I feel guilty eh. Baka mga pobre na kami niya, yung pamilya ko, kapagod na yan. My goodness. So, bakit? Let's go back to somatic experience. Because, Noong araw, Neil Armstrong, first man on the moon, America won, Russia lost. Martin Luther, fight against segregation, Martin Luther won, the whites, the supremacists, they lost. Ang buhay noong araw, sino panalo, sino talo. So dala-dala namin yan, our personality is passion by the somatic markers. Are you getting it? Yes. Yeah. So, let me bring you now to Generation X. Generation X are people who were born between 1980 to year 2000. Marami yan dito. Sino po kayo? Kasa kamay. Yan. If you are belonging to the Generation X, you are the most difficult generation to manage. <laughs> why? Ask me why. Why? I'm so glad you asked. Because you are the most suspicious generation of them all. <laughs> oh, sige nga. Ano yung pinakasikat na American television series that sociologists say exactly depict your character? Sige, sino? Ano? What's the American television series na sumikat? Huling-huli daw yung pag-uugali ng Gen X. Ano? Ah. Ha? Ah? Oh. We may not have time, ha? Sweetheart, i-play mo nga yung soundtrack. X-Files. X-Files. Oh, nakadami din na? Yes. Kaya yung mga Gen X, pag nag-uusap sila, ganito yan, hindi yung pinapahagalan. Ang panahari, huwag ka mag-tiwala dun sa katalino, huwag ka kailin yan. Tignan natin yung corporate values education. Nagtatrain na ako doon eh. You are the most suspicious generation because tignan mo yung corporate values nung araw ha. Si Bob Sherdy, very young na yan. Pero nung araw, part ng corporate values yung loyalty to company. Di ba? Siyempre, malasakit ang dupe. It comes in different forms. Malasakit for most companies in Unilab and what's the other one? Kibbutz Campos, Del Monte. Para sa kanya, Nutri-Asia. It's bayanihan and so forth and so on. How is going to be? Nawawala na yun, yung loyalty niya. Bakit? You become suspicious. Why? Let me tell you why. In America, 
Our generation let the Gen Xers down. In America, sabi na, how can the leader of a country commit such a terrible crime in the person of Marco. Richard Nixon? In our own country, we have 20 years of that. At hindi lang yun. Ito yung pinakamatindig panahon when you were growing up and you witnessed the fathers coming home in tears announcing that I've been laid off. Yeah. Before 1982, walang lay off yan. Yeah. Nung araw, pag mahina ang negosyo, they put you on a furlough and then when things are normalized, you come up full reinstatement, full salary, full position. No questions asked. Even the Japanese concept of perpetual employment, na wala yan. Why? Machines replace people. During the last 10 years of the last century, our HR initiative started with words that start with letter R. What are they? With dundums, with trenchment, with engineering, right sizing. In other words, magtanggal tayo ng tao, which is now happening. But because the personal computers will play. Tignan mo kung kailan lumobo yung, yung population ng Pilipinas, hindi naman nadagdagan ng bank tellers. Oh, sino pumalit sa bank tellers? ATF. Kung kayo depositor, ano ang past prefer nyo? Bank tellers o ATF? ATF. Bakit ATF? May mga lalaki gusto nila, bank tellers pa rin. <laughs> ah, iba naman ang motivo. Bakit ATF? 24-7. Nandiyan. Kung ikaw may ari ng bank, kung anong mas gusto mo, bank tellers o ATM? Bank tellers. Bakit? Walang overtime pay, walang night differential payment. Tapos, wala pang maternity leave, wala pang nakit ng ATM na nabuntis, di ba? <laughs> kung ikaw naman, kung customer ka, hindi ka na pipila na pakahaba. Haba, pakatapos yung maharap sa iyo, isang pagot na teller na mukhang pasas. <laughs> oh my God, kawawa <laughs> naman. <laughs> and so, pinatitanini, <laughs> those were the days when malasakit now become suspect. Ah, gusto mo magmalasakit kami sa company, pag nahirapan ng company, sigurado pag hindi mo kami patakas na din. You can't even offer that guarantee. Kaya, may mga speakers pa rin hindi nakakaintindi ng human being. Okay, no, 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 malusakit tayo eh. Kasi nandiyan yung plate na sumisip-sip eh. But you have to understand what's going on in their head. Okay, the only way I can do is I will never tell them to be loyal to your company. But I always tell them to be, if you are not loyal in what you're doing as a result of what you're doing for the company, you yourself will lose because you bring that ugali with you wherever you are. You have to reframe it, make it work. So, Gen X. Oh, ngayon, tignan natin ang, ang uh, relevance sa leadership dyan. Yeah. So, for example, si Sir I, uh, Gen X, you know, Pakatapos, naghahanap kayo. Uh, kayo na lang mamili sa akin. Sino yung mukhang baby boomer dito? Uh, huwag na lang. Kunyari na lang sa sir. Pag ako HR, nilapita ko si baby boomer. So, sabihin ko, congratulations. Why? You've been promoted. Oh, thank you. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Tika, tika, tika. May condition tayo eh. We could promote you if you would have to go to Davao and handle our location. So, unang papasok sa isip niya, wow, promotions, higher pay. Higher position, better benefits for my family. Dapa, sabi mo pa kaya kung grabe mura pa, lower living standards, higher pay, not bad. Peace and order, basta nandun si Duterte, safe lang mo, di ba? So, alam mo ano magiging decision? Tatagamin ko na, pagpindatagan ko pa, baka yung offer ibigay sa zero sum game. Ang isip? Eh, lalapit ako ngayon si Mr. Chen eh. So, congratulations. Oh, thank you, thank you. But, we're gonna move on. <coughs> Ang kanyang immediate reaction is, Why me? <laughs> <laughs> Wala na ba ibang option? <laughs> eh, kasi, when he was growing up, the father left for work, the mother left, do we may want it? There was a time when the kids were called the last key generation. Wala pa yung mga child, uh, children's rights ng araw. 
Kaya ang konsepto niya ng pagkaasin sa sabuhay, hindi yung iiwan na yung pamilya niya. Kasi nung siya yung malaki, wala nga sa bahay yung magulang eh. So kung hindi ko alam niya, ano yung isipin ng Edsa? Forget him. Sayang lang ang investment natin sa kanya. Walang interes sa career path. Ay, tignan mo siya, tinanggap niya ako, which is unfair. Do you get it? And now we bring you to the most fascinating generation of them all. Ito yung tinatawag na Gen Y. Sweet heart, pakita ba? Yan, yan, yan. Oh, yan na Gen Y. Ha? Otherwise called the Millennial Generation. So, these are people born between 1980 and year 2. Don't get too technical and legalist. So, kumimi na ako po na lang yung number. So, how many of you belong to Gen Y? Taas na may. Marami na yan, di ba? Now, if you belong to Gen Y, I've got good news and not so good news for you. Which one do you want to hear first? Good news. The not so good news is that the Gen Y are getting old. Welcome to the club. Kung araw pinagtatawa niyo ako, ha? Ako, di ba? Matanda na ngayon, kasama na tayo. And so, oh, what are the somatic markers for Gen Y? Number one, 911, international uh, terrorism, suicide bomber, melting of the Arctic ice, and then climate change. When I was in conversation with the world famous Simon Sinek, sabi sa Francis, the term Simon Sinek, uh, sabi Simon Sinek, the term climate change is stupid. I said, why? Climate is supposed to change. Kaya pala, for the longest time, hindi binibigyan ng urgency. Suppose you call it climate cancer. Kung napansin mo, wala na gumagamit ng term climate change. Now, why are we call, what are we calling it? Climate crisis now. So going back there. The biggest, the biggest amount of marker is none other than social media. No? Now, tignan natin ang characteristics nila. Understand, lahat ng anak ko minena siya. At hindi lang yan. Yung tatay nila, Trainer pa, tsaka speaker. Negosyante pa. Can you imagine? Ang conversation natin sa bahay, sweetheart, what are your two-year plan, five-year plan, ten-year plan? Parang it's out of way, di ba? Ito yung nagtatanong ako ng ganyan. Ito yung observation ko. The millennials have mastered the art and science of rolling their eyes. <laughs> Ito yung napansin ko sa kami na. It's true. Yung mga hindi nakakaintindi, yung tinatawag na generation. Ay, sa mga millennials daw, ang katamad nila. Excuse me. Masipag yan. Yung malang nakikita. May kumusap ako 70 plus years old. Galit na galit sa anak niya. Francis, sabi niya. May doklak ang office. Eh, nandun na tayo, di ba? Sabi ko, baka kayo ako, hindi. Sabi ko, sabi niya, ito mo yan, ano ko? Kasi, pinalaki ko may ako. Dapit ang building sa BGC. Pinalaki ko kasi may ako, may ask for it. Sabi ko, bakit po? Eh, hindi, ito mo yan, natutulog pa. Paano ba namin ayusin yan? Sabi ko, ah, sir. So, you equate productivity with presence in the office. Tama ba? Eh kahit na nag-Netflix na siya sa opisina, parang sa'yo, nandiyan siya, masipag. <laughs> Ang hindi niyo nakikita, nagtatrabaho yan sa kabi. Kasi, nung panahon natin, we have to go to the office to work. Ngayon, they bring their offices with them. Yeah, agree. Eh bakit na minis niya yan? Kasi matanda na po kayo. Eh no black, tulog na kayo eh. <laughs> Are you getting this strategy? Yeah. <laughs> so, masipag niya. Pre-pandemic, ganito sila magtrabaho. Sipag, grabe, sipag. Pag nakaipon na ng konti, yan, yeah, travel fair. Baksak lahat, bako silo. Sipag na dito. <laughs> so, their number one plan is they don't want to make plans for the future. Kaya ano ang favorite expression nila? Yes. What is your law? You only need once. Yung mga graduate ang namamahaling skwela, hindi lang magbabanggit ang mga kulay asul na makaberde niya. Sasabihin na, carpe diem. Pangyayin lang yan. Bakit? 
You can talk to the psychology kung bakit sila ganun mag-isip. Two years time, five years time, ten years time. So, mga ikasya po, siyong kasabi mo, so isa ba mo? Mamaya, kakain ka na. I might as well enjoy the moment. Tapos, dinagdagan pa ng FOMO. So, what is FOMO? Fear of missing out. Somebody sends them a photo of an asal niya. Ay, gusto ko niya. Mamaya, mawalan ako niya. Kaya wala siyang pera. Gusto ko niya. Fear of missing out. Oh. Eh, ngayon, because of the pandemic, yung FOMO naging JOMO. What is it? JOMO now means the joy of missing out. The learning. Tsaka yung mga millennials, nagmamature na naman sila. Nakakaroon na ng pamilya. Ilan na sa kanila ang nagsusunat sa akin sa Facebook na, Sir, tama pala kayo nung araw, napakinggan ko kayo. I've been in this business for the longest time. Anybody here from Bacolod? From Bacolod, ma. Uh, St. Lasal University. May lumapit sa akin. Dugdagad ng baka. Sabi sa akin. Sir Francis, actually, this is not my first time to hear you speak. So, because that's all. When was the first time when I was in elementary? So, to shut up. Alam ka, alam ka na yan. Always in a hurry to belong. FOMO. Gadget-centered generation. They don't like to read books. Kasi fascinated sa gadget. Ito na yung panahon na smartphones, pumasok na technology, grabe yung advancement, apps, and everything. Siyempre excited sila. First time lang yan. And they came out with a unique invention that nobody, no other generation ever had. What is that? They invented the quarter-life crisis. Anybody knows what the quarter life crisis is? Wala. Sabi ko na nga ka, dasak kalit ang presentation ko. Ito nga ka. Quarter life crisis simply means kami mid-life crisis. Sina quarter life crisis. Bakit? Sisihin mo yung mga talk show hosts, yung mga lukulukong motivational speaker na wala nang ginawa kung hindi kopyahin yung mga materialis ni Oprah Winfrey, Ellen DeGeneres, at mga commencement speaker at mga nanay. Ah, okay, magamit sa akin, ha? Can you promise me hindi kayo magagamit sa akin? Magamit ka? Hindi, yeah. uwi na ako. Oo, oh, ito. Nagsusumbong sa nagsusumbong sa akin yung mga Guidance Counselor, sabi na, grabe yung mga nanay niya, tatapang, mga militante. Dala-dala lang nila yung project ng anak, lulusubin yung teacher. Bakit ito lang ang grades na binigyan mo sa project ng anak? Hindi mo alam kung ano yung ginawa. Ano kung ba't galit siya? Siya ang gumagawa ng project. Mababagrades na sasaktan. At hindi mo yan. Kung kopyahin nyo yun, ito mga motivational speaker at sasabihin sa kanila, Ah, anak, you can be anyone you want to be as long as you put your heart into it. Ano po nga niya? Can you imagine Shaquille O'Neal, the former NBA center player for Lakers, wanting to be the best sports jockey in the world? It was simply that he's bigger than a horse. Anak, you can do anything you want to do as long as you have the passion. Yeah, this is the most important set of passion. As long as you have the passion for it, maybe. I played varsity basketball when I was in high school. At the time, at that time, height was not a major consideration. Until now, I still cannot slump down even though I want it. And that's just my passion. Tapos, ito na yung mga bata. Francis, my passion is travel. Sabi ko, hobby yun. Wala eh. Ito na yung panahon, I don't know if you remember. Ito yung panahon ng mga bata ang lumalapit sa amin. Nagsasabi, Sir Francis, talk to my mom. Sabi ko, what's your problem? Talk to her. Sabi ko, bakit? Do I really have to go to school in order to be rich? Ah, I remember. Kasi they were growing up in the Rossi economy. Do I have to go to school? Look, look at Steve Jobs, look at Mark Zuckerberg, look at Bill Gates. They all drop out from school, yet yeah, they're the richest men in the world. Yeah, that's ah, true. Yeah. So how, how are you gonna argue against that? Ah, I don't know what that is. 
Sabi niya, oo nga, no? Yes, sabihin mo, sabihin mo, sabihin mo, sabihin mo, wait, 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 wait. Sino nga yun? Sino? Bill Gates. Pag yung isa, sino? Mark Zuckerberg. Sino isa? Steve Jobs. Oo nga, no? Drop out. So, di ba? Di ba? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hindi ka nun napakapag-isip. Hindi ka nun napakaproses. Dapat ang tatanin mo, from what school did they drop out from? Ang oh, hard part. Ikaw nga, hindi ka pa na-qualify. Drop out ang iniisip mo. Pag-aaral ka. Yan ang millennials, but now COVID-19 is a good teacher. They are now being tempered. The good news is that the millennials are now in strategic positions for leadership. Sila na yun! Sila na yun! And they are entrepreneurial. Marami sa kanila, mga pasig sa negosyo ngayon. Now, the last generation is ito na yung mga bagong nurses na kamapasok, Generation Z. Generation Z, technically speaking, is anybody who was born after year 2000, kaya nga millennials, representing millennium. Although scientists are saying start of 1995, Gen Z na siya. Let me give you the characteristics of Gen Z. Number one, they are the Google reflex generation. <laughs> Yung mga Gen Xers, galit na galit sa millennials yan. Sabi na, pagkausap kita, bastos ka, bakit ma? Ano yung tingin mo sa po? Fascinated kasi sila sa social media. Today, when I speak to the young people, I love that they are looking at their phones. Why? They're not doing social media, they're fact-checking me. <laughs> Kaya baldado ngayon na maraming speaker eh. Habang nagsasalita, Ah, ano ha, ah, ang start nila, biglang tatayo yan. In, in same kasal, nangyari sa akin yan. A whole gym, full of 2,000 plus. Habang nagsasita, tumayo yung isang bata. I don't believe what you say, sir. Ganon. Hiyang-hiya sa akin ng mga teacher. Siyempre, ang isip nila, hindi na nga nang binabiyate itong speaker. Tinapahiya. <laughs> I don't know why, I always get those experiences. Doon pa sa mga hindi nagpapayat. Kaya I think I should. <laughs> <laughs> I think na lang may experience na ako, so I know how to deal with it, di ba? Ganun yun. So they fact check. Kaya, paano pagubulahin na mga yan? Ito yung kinukwento natin because they have so much data, they have so much information, they think they have higher expectations, hindi lang yan. Habang kinukwento ko yung mga unrealistic expectations, his name is Rufi. Rufi is one of the highest officers of a well-known company called Monizin. Hinampas niya ako, sakit eh. Sabi, parang ito ko yan. Sabi ko, bakit ano? Ako mismo nakarinig. Dean ng university, kausap in graduating class. I won't mention the name of the university kahit na blue ang color niya. <laughs> Sabi niya, because you are going to graduate from this university, I expect all of you to make it to vice president position in five years' time. Uh, Sister Presidential, very pari kasi yun. Kaya siguro hindi, di ba? Laging problema sa ito yung mga yun, di ba? So, so, yung mga bata, galit po, impression na po, paglamas, di ba? Pasok sila ngayon sa medical city, di ba? Kaya ba yan? Five years ago rito, yung mga vice president namin, hindi pa namamatay. <laughs> Paano ako magiging vice-president? Nandiyan ka? Ay, mahaba ka ang buhay ng tao. Ikaw mo ngayon ang naging hari si Chris Charles. Ba, tagal! Yung iba naman pumasok sa mga company, paano ba yun? Wala ka may vice-president dito. Unrealistic expectation. But because we don't know all these detailed details, we just brought it as the same may entitle the gusto nila instant success. You know to understand all this nitty-gritty. But I'm telling you, Gen C are the original digital natives. Ang hirap aralin ng digital, bigay mo lang sa kanila, give them half an hour, kuha na nila. Okay. Yung mga kaedad ko, yung mga kaedad, yung kausap kong teacher. Sabi ng teacher nung araw, ano nga, ano? Alam mo, Francis, yung mga computer para sa bata lang yan. Ako nga, di pa nga ako nag-e-email. 
<laughs> Sabi ko, ma'am, hindi po pinatmama na kaya. Kinahihiyan po yun. <laughs> Tapos nakunta na ng pera sa digital transformation. O, oh, ano na naman ang... Ayon ako yung digital, digital na yun, para sa mga bata lang eh, yung COVID-19 dumating. O, oh, ay di na-lockdown sila. Ano ang nabiscovery nila? Pwede rin pala ako mag-digital transformation kasi natutumak TikTok. Pwede rin pala. This is why Sherry is right when she is saying that you gotta transform your company and your organization into becoming a perpetual learning organization. Keep learning. Ito, ito yung sakin ha. When things are in a state of flux, you want to talk about the new normal. Let me talk, let me tell you what the new normal is. The new normal is chronic instability. That's what the new normal is. So you gotta keep on adjusting. Methods will always change, but the mission remains the same. I still want my children to be good. Now I'm adjusting. Bigyan niyo lang po ako ng two and a half years. Nag-prepare na ako ng lesson on effective grandparenting. Pula pa sa experience, inaaral ko niya. So the mission of wanting my children to be successful is still the same, but the methodology is not in the back. And by the way, for your information, your nurses and the Gen Z, they are now referred by sociologists today as the most anxious generation. There's a suicide attempt in two Chinese schools just very recently. There's a high degree of uh, depression happening right now. Hey, Papa, you know, the money of our media. Prinsipe ka na nga, at saka prinsesa ka na nga. Nakukumpli ka nga, may mental health issues ka. So, matalaga mga buong mundo, namamatay dahil sa COVID-19. How, how kapal can you be? Pero pag pinapanood kayo ng mga bata, akala nila yun yung default eh. Now, Ma'am Chair, do you talk a little bit about retention and hiring? A lot of young people have already told me, why should I give my company, even though there's a higher pay, when my boss takes care of me? The two top reasons why good people live are still the same. Number one, they can't get along with their bosses. True. And number two, the feeling that they are unappreciated. True. Because see, it's a new idea. Idea of a tradition, at least. Kailangan pa bang purihin ko yan? Kaya nga pinapayaran niya, trabaho niya. But you're dealing with a different generation now. This is a generation that craves encouragement and inspiration. Why should you leave? Parang bank ko yan eh. You know, this biggest branch of bank networks now pray ko na lahat ng branch manager eh. Kung magaling yung relationship ng branch manager, kahit na ni-rotate na sila at malayo na, pupuntahan pa rin ng customer niya. That relationship has to be learned and acquired. Kaya the, the challenge is not on the younger generation, the challenge is on our leaders. How do we equip them with the leadership skills to be able to be there? I know we can't match the offer of other countries, but at least we should know how to retain them. So you have to keep us more of resilience to organization. In your hospitals, you also need resilience. Let me talk to you a little bit about our business natalimamuna. We talk about resilience, resilience, resilience. Let me show you, in organizations, you also need resilience. Number one, you need financial resilience. Because right? financial resilience enables you with the resources that can withstand shocks, with some economic upheavals and so forth and so on. Kaya I understand. We have to make the most use of our resources. Number two, you got an operational resilience. Just for your information, I'm now the brand ambassador for GLOBE, for SMEs. Kako, pareho lang ang beta. Hindi naman nadagdagan eh. Pero nag-increase yung efficiency mo, nabawasan ngayon yung wastage and everything, you earn more. Simple, simple lang. 
Do you realize that in many organizations there's a lack of wastage? Number three, you gotta have reputational resilience. Kasi ngayon, in order to attract good people, you gotta have a good reputation outside. You know? 